In today's episode of Getting Geeky with Gamer Leave, I sit down with Josh to talk about mini blitz. Legos and games? How do they go together? Find out by staying tuned. Then we'll see what's on Kickstarter, but first, a message about our sponsors. This episode is proudly powered by one of our Kickstarter backers, Redwell Games, and their latest game, Six Gun Showdown. The fastest playing tension-filled game of Wild West shootouts for ages 9 years and older. That's on Kickstarter until Friday the 5th of July. More to come within our Kickstarter corner portion of the show. Getting geeky with Gamer Leaf. The podcast in which one man strives to level up his geekhood and helping you do the same one battle at a time. Now, let's get geeky with Gamer Leaf. Welcome to Getting Geeky with the Game Relief. Today we have a special treat for you. If you were ever a kid or you have kids, you've probably stepped on a Lego or built with Legos. How does that go with tabletop board gaming, you might ask? Well, today we're lucky enough to be joined by the creator and mastermind of a new system game or something like that called Mini Blitz. Is that right, Josh? Is that how you fall in line with Mini Blitz? Pretty much, yeah. It is a Lego uh, minifig-based card game. That brings your favorite characters to the tabletop arena. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us on Getting Geeky with Gamer Leaf. We really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. No problem. Now, before we jump into your card game and mini blitz and everything, let's rewind a little bit if we could. How did you get into playing tabletop board games? The usual way. Somebody came along and said, hey, you want to play a game? And I said, sure. And so we broke out Monopoly and I got ticked and then we played Uno and that was a little bit better, but. (laughs) Uh, expanded from there was a singing young lady and she invited me to a game called munchkin and that was a lot of fun uh never was one of a fan for tabletop gaming uh did a little bit of warhammer but not enough to really take off and so um yeah mainly board games tabletop gaming was never my forte until i started working on mini blitz and yeah Awesome. So what what kind of board games are you playing these days? Currently, one of my favorites is the farming game. If you own a business or are running a business, or if you have kids who love making money, the farming game is one of the best business uh, teachers ever. I think I've heard somebody bring it up in passing. What can you tell us about that? Uh, The farming game is a game where you play against the board, not each other. So if you and I were to sit down and play, you would... um, if bad stuff happened to you, I might be able to make money off of that, but I could not cause bad stuff happening to you. It's hard enough. So it kind of replicates business, you said? Yep. In the manner of farming, but yes. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. Awesome. Now, something else that sounds pretty cool is Mini Blitz. The word on the street is it's on Kickstarter and stuff. What can you tell us about it? All right. So first off, we have four starter decks. You get to pick 20th Century, which has firearms and explosives. Medieval, which has sharp pointy objects from throughout history. Beyond Earth brings the futuristic tech and lasers to the battlefield. And Arcanum brings um, basically Harry Potter magic stuff to it. These are fully intermixable decks. You can start with one as a two or four player game, or use it as a starter deck for a much larger army. So that's just the product is just the decks. Now, when you get the decks, Everything expands from there. You take out the cards, you equip them to your characters to give them the powers and weapons you want them to have. After you do that, you dump out your bin of Lego. You start building your own battlefield. This game is governed by, wouldn't it be cool if? So when you're building your battlefield, wouldn't it be cool if there were doors there? If you check out my Instagram, you'll see some of the other, what would would it be cool if? Like, wouldn't it be cool if there's a giant ice tower that you have to break through the ice to get to certain passages? Wouldn't it be cool if there is a stream with a current rule? Wouldn't it be cool if you had a castle that you had to fight up the stairs for? Wouldn't it be cool if there was a fort made out of wood, so if you shot it with energy weapons, it would catch fire? That's um, This is a game that's designed to be as creative as whoever's playing it, so I do ask you to make up your own battlefield rules and share them on the Instagram. If I'm understanding correctly, 
it's narrative as many as much as you can do with your Legos or your creative as you can be, and then you have the cards. With is that like a combat system, or how do the cards play into it? So the cards represent the equipment on your characters. Um, let's take the 20th century deck. You pull out a Foreman class card that lets you know what your minifig can do, just rules wise as a character in, in your Lego collection. And then you add, say, um, submachine gun. It's got a range of 30 studs. Um, you add some armor, you add a helmet, you toss a couple grenades on that character. And the more stuff you equip him with, the slower he goes, because on that Foreman class card is a fatigue chart, which is basically an encumbrance system. So you do that for a bunch of characters, and then you build your own battlefield rules. And then you compete with each other on your battlefield. We have suggestions in the deck of cards like elimination, capture the flag, bomb the flag, stuff like that. But after you play those, you want to get involved in this and make up your own battlefield rules. Okay, uh, that's awesome. Now, I'm looking at one of the cards on your Kickstarter page. So I'm seeing like a range and I'm seeing like dice as well as uh, cost and money. I'm not sure what you're looking at cost-wise. Uh, cost used to be the word that we used for weights. Okay, sorry. So I have dollars like a yellow, orange, and a red like dollars. So, so that first image on the top of my Kickstarter is not an actual playing card. I took a playing card and I fudged it so that that card there is a representative of um, the different levels of Kickstarter and just an introduction to the Kickstarter. Scroll down a bit. <laughs> Scroll down a bit to one of the actual cards we have on there. Okay, so what can you tell us about the actual cards? Okay, that, that's kind of cool what you did that with the showing the levels and whatnot. But then looking at these actual cards, it looks like they have something similar. What can you tell us about those? Yep. So the numbers under the D6 are how much damage that weapon does when you roll that dice. Um, which card are you looking at? Uh, let's see here. I got a sidearm. I can kind of see it a little bit. Okay, so you see how one and two is zero. And if you roll a three, four, or five, that does one damage. And if you roll a six, it does two damage. That's all it is. Okay, yeah, I see that. You look to the right to that, you see that there is an attacks. And it's got two at the top. So we put a tap system in there. So when you attack somebody, you twist it to the one. And now you have one ammo left on that pist on that sidearm. Okay, so that's cool. And then you said we come up with our own battlefield rules. So it would just depend on what we come up in that regard? Correct. That's correct. So if I'm understanding this correctly, it's the cards in order to make your Legos become like a war game if, or something like that? Pretty much, yes. A war game or cooperative game. You hit my Instagram, you'll see a massive battlefield on it. And that really, we're talking... Um, four and a half by three base plates. And uh, we've used that as a survival horror game where a guy's running around and I've summoned zombies to chase him around the battlefield. So, mwahahaha. Okay, awesome. So that, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. And so I guess you just would, depend on whatever Legos you have, you can, and you said they can be as creative as you want. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, this is this game is fully designed for you to make up your own home rules. So... So that sounds pretty cool. Awesome. And so, you know, you said on the Kickstarter they have different levels. So it looks like a 12 a $23, and $40. Is that right? And there's some early birds still available, but they have to hurry soon. Uh, be able to get a, for a little bit less than that if they get the early bird. Yeah, at the time it's recording, there's what? Two more, the early bird at the $10 level, and then some of the more at the other ones. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Awesome. So what are they going to get? Like a couple decks of cards or what all do they get when they back your project? So the um, 10 and $12 is one deck of cards, which fully equips up to four characters. You can choose whether that's a starter deck or a 2v2 battle or a uh, four-way battle. Um, when you get two decks, you, you get to pick one of the two decks. You get four decks, you get to pick any four of the four decks. Uh, there's another one we just added today, which is the eight decks, in which you pick any eight of the four decks. So mix and match. If you want uh, all space marines coming in, then that's the, then you'll probably go heavily 20th century and uh, beyond Earth. Yeah, it sounds pretty awesome. And um, if I remember right, either talking to you or seeing something on Kickstarter, it sounds like it's pretty easy for kids as well. Oh, totally, yes. Um, the youngest I've had played and understand what's going on is three years old. Uh, the father had to help him with the encumbrance system, but uh, he did all the strategy, dice rolling, and keeping track of ammo and armor. And that was back on Gen 4, where you kept track of ammo and armor by pulling bricks off of a stack. 
the uh, system where you twist the, the tap system where you twist the card is a wholly new system that just makes the gameplay so much easier. That's why we're upgrading to Gen 5. Okay, so this has been around for a while then? Uh, since uh, 2014. I printed 12 72 card decks, eight of them sold, and I knew I was onto something. Awesome. So how did, well, how did you come up with the decision to go to Kickstarter with it then? Basic need of, um, I've chosen not to go into debt as a business owner. And um, not to mention the fact that I really suck at marketing and something about putting myself up on Kickstarter really kicks that marketing into high gear and puts me in front of people who can help me with marketing. Well, there you go. Awesome. And you're not going for an outlandish goal. So that's good. And what, where it looks like we're almost a third of the way there. Yep. With 13 days to go. Awesome. So when it comes to mini blitz, what makes your game pop or stand out as one? My audience should go check it out. And if they like what they see, back it on Kickstarter today so this can become a reality so more people can enjoy it. It, it comes from the fact that every single other game you play almost has a story that you get involved with. Kickstarter is the only game I know of where you bring your story with you. Now, you can use like Star Wars or Halo or any of those characters, or you can invent your own characters and your own backstories and bring them to the tabletop gaming. And we have the cards for your characters. Just a refresher, what were the different decks I can get? Like you said, the Space Marines and some other ones? Or... Yep. So the, the first deck is 20th Century. That's the one with all the firearms and grenades in it. Uh, a good uh, damage, just a damage dealing deck that does good range too. The second is medieval. That will bring you a lot more of the medieval weapons, um, melee weapons. So a lot of close range, running up close and stabbing people, which is always fun. Um, Beyond Earth is a futuristic tech and lasers. That one is an accelerated game play because it's got so, a few speed boosts in there. And finally is Arcanum. It's kind of the magic deck. It is the turtley deck. It's the one where you just sit there and you build up your army and you increase their health, you increase their armor, and then when they're ready, they go face their opponents. So if you have somewhere fast to go, you don't want that one, but man, if you want to get there in style, pick that deck. Okay, yeah, it sounds pretty exciting and awesome. And I have to have a Lego for each card, is that right? So I equip them, I have to have Legos for everything, or I guess some kind of character to be able to act as the army or the people? You need a minifig for each form and class card. As to, uh, if you see those pictures there of a sidearm, yeah, you any any pistol would do to represent that. Um, I talked about Halo a little bit ago. In the Beyond Earth is the Electro Blade. And I have a character running around with the Halo weapon, but I gave him two Electro Blades because that weapon has two. So I'm like, all right, let's run with that. Um, with the... Like, you don't actually have to have the picture that's on the card on your character. The card basically represents the power that you want that character to have. Okay, awesome. So if somebody doesn't necessarily have Legos and kids, but if they had a bunch of miniatures or whatnot, they could even break out miniatures from another game and use those possibly, I would think. Correct, yep. Okay, awesome. So yeah, look, and like you said, it's for kids as well as adults or whatnot, and you can have your own home-based rules. So it sounds really awesome. So I, if anybody's listening and they want to go ahead and check it out, they can jump on over. You said Instagram's a good place as well as the Kickstarter, so you can see what's going on there and become help it become a reality. Minus coming there to your hometown to stalk you, how can people keep up with you and everything you have going on over there at Blitz Built Games? So uh, first off is the Kickstarter. Help us out there. Just look up Mini Blitz on Kickstarter. Second is swing over to you. YouTube, look up Blitz Built Gaming Networks. We were we are doing uh, videos on playthroughs as Generation Five comes out. We'll be doing videos on what the different card powers play like. So you'll see some playthroughs there. And swing over to Instagram where people are going to be sharing their own minifigs, their own characters that they've built, as well as their own Battlefield house rules to get some ideas. And uh, on Instagram, we're at Blitz Built Games uh, underscore between each word. And hashtag, hashtag who's in your army or hashtag what's your battlefield are what you want to go look up for um, those different 
builds. Okay, awesome. And if you give me the links, I'll make sure I leave those in the show notes. So anybody listening, make sure you go ahead and check out the Kickstarter. They'll be on there through the 15th of July. Now, um, in case somebody's listening after that fact, it sounds like you've been doing this for a little while. Uh, is there anything in your back pocket or any secrets of upcoming stuff you're working on that they can, they might be able to check out later on down the road if this has already been fulfilled? <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, maniacal laughing. Uh, why, yes, there are things I'm working on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got to get the maniacal laugh out. Um, so you'll notice the, the company is Blitzbilt Games, but the, the system is called Mini Blitz. Myself and a friend are working on a system called Mega Blitz. This is where we bring the larger vehicles and characters to the battlefield. We've got four decks we've been working on. Uh, Giants Macropolis, which is a transforming car into robot system. We have um, Lords of the Wild Island, which is uh, things you find in the prehistoric and present jungle. We're going to have um, Mechanations of Nations, which is tanks, mechs, jeeps, and such. And then finally, we have uh, Creatures of Lore, which is where your Tolkien and um, dragons and all that stuff come into play. You know, stuff out of Harry Potter. But it's all the bigger stuff. Now, here's the cool part is all of those characters can still work with mini blitz. So you can have Optimus Prime facing off against a bunch of Lego minifigures and the rule system still works. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. That's awesome. And so that'll be coming out after a while. So that's cool. So, the, But first off, we got to make mini blitz a uh, reality there on Kickstarter through the 15th of July. Is that right, Joshua? That is correct. Yes. Awesome. And just really quickly, um, will you be charging shipping after or is that charged during the Kickstarter? Shipping, uh, I've already put it in the Kickstarter that there's shipping costs involved. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So yeah, th- so that comes on there. So that's awesome. Yeah. So I'll make sure I leave all those links in the show notes if you get them to me right now. We don't want to keep you all day, but we really appreciate you coming on Getting Geeky with Game Relief with us to talk all about a mini blitz that's on Kickstarter. My pleasure. And thank you very much for having me. No problem. Wow, that was fun. Now I have something to do with Legos besides build with them or step on them. If you liked what you heard, make sure you jump on over and check out his campaign and back it today so we can make Mini Blitz reality. Now, let's go with Batterina Leaf. Where are we going, Batterina Leaf? Kickstarter corner! He stood squinting in the noon, day sun. The braggart youth in front of him with something to prove. Hey, old timer, how long has your pine box queen measured up for? Came the shrill voice from down the road, the ineffective taunt barely covering the shake in the kid's voice. Longer than you, Bren Breeden, child, came his gruff reply. Jones noticed the kid twitch and reach for his rusty shooting iron. Did that sound familiar to you? Don't worry, we're here so it will. It's part of the story of Six Gun Showdown. Six Gun Showdown is a quick 5-10 to ten minute game where players are characters in a Wild West shootout. The game combines strategy, memory, and a dexterity element. Like a quick draw that serves to generate tension and guides the players to read their opponent's actions. Really immersing them into the feeling of being in a shootout. Designed as a small box game that is as quick to learn as it is to play, Six Gun Showdown can be enjoyed as part of a board game night either as a quick game between other games or run as a small tournament of link games. Players can choose one of six characters that each have their own deck of cards and unique dice that require different strategies to be successful. This gives Six Gun Showdown layers of tactical depth that will have you playing the game again and again. Go back the quick draw card game for those with nerves of steel Six Gun Showdown before Friday the 5th of July and make sure you're subscribed to Getting Geeky with Game Relief so you don't miss my sit down with the mastermind of this game when we have our showdown episode. I'm a huge fan of Scooby Doo so this game greatly reminds me of such. As you might know, escape rooms are all the rage, but someone is taking it to the next level. During a quiet stroll through the park one peaceful evening, you're attacked from behind and knocked unconscious. You wake up blindfolded. You remove the strip of cloth from your eyes and find yourself in the middle of a forest. Directly in front of you, under the moonlight, stands a weathered, hand-painted wooden sign that reads, Camp Hackaway. 
Next to you is a flashlight with a note attached. Welcome to Body Count Tear at Camp Hackaway Board Game, which is a horror-themed board game for two to four players. Try to be the first to escape Camp Hackaway. It includes a Kickstarter exclusive expansion pack. Body Count Tear at Camp Hackaway is the first chapter in the Body Count series of horror-themed board games from Game Master J. In this chapter, you've been kidnapped and wake up in the outskirts of Camp Hackaway and must survive the night while searching for the one item that will allow you to escape. Meanwhile, crazed serial killer Hack and Hank stalks the campground, eliminating players one by one. Will you survive? Find out by backing Body Count Tear at Camp Hackaway board game before Thursday the 4th of July. Have you seen Sprocket the game that just launched a Kickstarter? It looks awesome. You each get a card from a different level and build the object it asks you to. The first one who builds it in complete form and dings the bell proceeds to the next round or next level and they'll get a harder card. It reminds me of Ubongo that we played in game group except the pieces are 3D and play gets harder the further you proceed. Their Kickstarter video shows and tells you exactly how to play. It looks pretty fun. Plus, we're teaming up with them to do a giveaway over on thegiveawaygeek.com. Plus, we'll be doing an interview with them as well. So, in the meantime, make sure you're subscribed to the podcast so you don't miss that show. And also, in the meantime, go watch their video and check out the game and back Sprocket the game before Tuesday the 9th of July. Casual Game Insider Magazine is now on Kickstarter for its 8th year. Get great deals on annual and lifetime subscriptions, back issues, and advertising. Each issue now features a free game to play and enjoy. Casual Game Insider has been receiving high praise from gaming media since the first issue in 2012. It has been called the best board gaming magazine on the market by several reviewers. A magazine that is serious about quality. By Purple Pawn and a great resource and fun read by the Spiel Podcast. Bezier Games has praised its super accessible format that's both welcoming and engaging. And Ultra Prowl says the paper quality and production quality are just flat out better than most publications in tabletop. Find out what all the hype is about at casualgamerevolution.com backslash kickstarter. Did you catch my last episode entitled, Are You Nearly Dead? Then Try Hiller's Dice? You didn't? Well, I'll wait for you then. It can most easily be accessed via our show notes and the update via Hiller's Dice updates entitled, Nearly 113%. We approach our first stretch goal, giveaway announcement. Go listen, I'll wait for you. What do you think? I agree. I'd rather step on these than Legos, and I'd rather roll these than typical D4s as well. If you feel the same way, make sure you back their project and enter our giveaway before Monday the 8th of July. The giveaway can be accessed via the episode show notes as well as over at thegiveawaygeek.com. If you liked any of the games we talked about in today's episode, make sure you check out their Kickstarter campaigns to show them and us a little love. Backing them goes a long way. Plus, make sure to stay up to date on all the giveaways we're doing over at thegiveawaygeek.com. There will be at least two to three new giveaways going live over there next week. It's our least favorite time as well as yours. So until next episode, make sure you go ahead and get geeky, stay geeky, and bring others in the geek fold by sharing our episodes with others as well as keeping up with the giveaways we're doing over at thegiveawaygeek.com. Game Relief out. <laughs> Gamer Leaf levels up. Tune in next week to see if Gamer Leaf's luck holds up. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>